This is Restless. Welcome back to Restless. We are here on a special bonus episode. This is Restless, and in case you aren't familiar with us, we are like the youth group program of the Reform Forum, or at least I like to think of us that way. Pastor Michael, what do you think about that? That sounds great. Hey, we've got some youth here tonight. I've got uh, a baby in my lap once again, and uh, he will probably be grunting and making all kinds of noise. Uh, it will be, you know, uh, in unintelligible. Um, but thankfully, we do have another guest with us that will not be so unintelligible. So uh, we have Rob, Rob McKenzie. Welcome back to the show, Rob. Thanks. It is great to be back. Thank you for having me on since I kind of forced you to have me on. That's right. Rob, tell our listeners who we've gotten a lot of new oh. listeners since we started covering the rise and fall of Mars Hill. Tell them a little bit about yourself. My name is uh, Rob McKenzie. I am a ruling elder in an OPC church. I uh, am the director of publishing and marketing for the Reformed Forum, where we feature our uh, flagship podcast, Crisis Center, with Camden Busey and Jim Cassie, Jeff Waddington. Uh, Lane Tipton is also a, uh, often on the, the podcast there. My podcast and uh, my pastor, Bob Trillo, we do a podcast called Theology Simply Profound. And I had the esteem pleasure of attending seminary with Matt. That's right. And so that, oh, (laughs) and and that is how Restless convinced someone on the Reformed Forum to once promote our podcast. So we would like to thank Rob for that providential meeting. Um, And so, yeah, we have had Rob on uh, twice. Actually, later this week, we will have Rob back uh, for a full episode going back to covenant theology and dispensationalism, um, because it is a a, a request we've gotten a lot. Tonight, we are actually covering the problem that happens when the youth pastor gets up and preaches to the church, and the pastor has to have a talk with him afterwards. But if we can be honest, having to have a talk with the youth pastor afterwards is preferable to the other situation where he does such a good job, he gets poached, and then you have to find a new youth guy, right? Like, you'd rather oh. have him be a little bit bit wild, right? So if you have so, an associate pastor, you want to make sure that he's kind of subpar? That's right. You definitely, <laughs> definitely. Good advice. Yep. Um, I'm giving great advice, just like in our first episode covering <laughs> I Kiss Christianity Goodbye. The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill, me and my co-host, Matt, the current Baptist, joined me and we discussed uh, Joshua Harris's role in the YRR, his relationship to it. And one thing we did, as we often do on this podcast, we played yay, nay, or nuance regarding Joshua Harris's heart behind writing I Kissed Dating Goodbye. And Joshua Harris is obviously explaining this to come out and say, and this is why I no longer endorsed my writing. I asked it to get removed by my publisher, right? He made a film about how hurtful his book was. And I asked Matt and he asked me if based on his heart, do you agree with the heart behind the book or disagree? Our good friend, Rob of the reform forum, after hearing the episode said, Well, interesting take. I think uh, you should let me come on and tell you why you are wrong. And so tonight, today, whenever you are listening to this, friends, we're going to play the clip that I said yay to. And then we are going to let Rob tell me why I'm wrong. And we're going to let Pastor Michael weigh in. And by the end of this, I think we're all going to agree, probably with me, but that's okay. We'll see what happens. But I'm looking forward to it. So I will play the clip. And then we'll go to Rob about his disagreement with it. The premise of I Kiss Dating Goodbye was that sex before marriage was one of the worst, most dangerous things, one of the biggest deals when it came to the list of sins. At least that was the way I thought as a teenager growing up in an evangelical church. And I Kiss Dating Goodbye tried to play out the implications of that like if this is if this is really this bad then we need to take this seriously so i was a zealous uh idealistic kid who was saying guys we need to really love jesus we need to honor each other 
And so dating is leading to compromise. There was so much fear around AIDS. There was so much fear around the possibility of unwanted pregnancy and abortion. There were all these bigger battles that were being waged in the culture. And so I basically said, we need to go a step further. And dating is actually a thing we should avoid. Why put ourselves in a situation where we could compromise? So there is our clip. I said, on a whole, yay to the purpose behind I Kiss Dating Goodbye. We should maybe say that uh, Matt never wants anybody to take nuance. He never he he wants you to pick yay or nay, even if it really hurts. (laughs) And I believe I explained why in the episode. But Rob. Yeah. Are you a yay, nay or nuance on Uh -uh. on on the I kiss dating goodbye? I'm definitely a nay. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Michael, if you're a nuance, Rob and I are going to gang up on you and make you come (laughs) come to one side or the other. Uh, so all right rob give yeah. us give us the nay case okay. well i mean if we're just talking about one aspect of that that he he wanted to care about people i mean that that's i'm not challenging that yes he he wanted uh to care for people but the reason why i'm a nay is because he he fundamentally did not understand sin the the idea that that dating in and of itself automatically led to these sins is is just a misunderstanding we we're we're the sinner we have sin within us that so you have all these guys and girls that would have gone on dates that may have sinned committed sins now they're sitting at home alone well they can sin just as much sitting home alone by their thoughts and their actions than if they were dating so it's not as if the actual act of dating was going to lead to sin. We we sin. We're sinners, and so his 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 fundamental idea that that because dating in and of itself, we and he really he didn't even kind of hold back with it may lead to sin. He was saying that dating in and of itself was kind of a sinful activity. Hmm. Uh, now I don't know if, if maybe if we were to have him here and I were to say that to him, he'd say that's not what I meant, but that is what he said. Hmm. Uh, but just the idea that that you you know you go on a date and now you're going to get AIDS. Well, that obviously it's because you had sex. Well, okay. Hopefully, the majority of people within the church when they went on dates weren't having sex. Some I, we know some probably would, but but it's not the act of dating that that was sinful. It would have been the fornication. Hmm. So so that's why I'm amazed because he his his whole book in and of itself is based on a faulty premise of the understanding of sin. Rob, did you did you ever read this book? Uh, I did not. It's interesting. I remember when it came out, um, I had a good friend, and she read it, and uh, she stopped dating. And so we, we had a lot of uh, uh, talk about it. My wife and I would, would talk to her. Uh, she was my wife's former roommate at one point. And, uh, yeah, she just she, – and, and we, I remember listening to this because when she first was telling me about it, I'm thinking, okay, well – I had no, I, I was a nuanced person. I didn't know anything. I was agnostic about what, yeah. what he was teaching, about where he was coming from. But the more I listened to her, the more I told her, this is dangerous. Mm-hmm. This is just, you, because it's built on a faulty premise. And she, she, it's funny, she was dating someone. She broke up with him. She wouldn't date anybody for about two or three years. And then she came back to us and said, this is ridiculous. How in the world am I going to get married? And then she started dating somebody and then they got married and became missionaries and they have, you know, six kids now. So it all worked out for her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So I did that. I I did have some interaction with it, but I never actually read it. I have either never, I don't think I've ever read. I don't think I've read the whole thing. I may have read part of it, but again, I was reacting mostly to the clip. I think Rob, that is a strong nay case. I'll say that. Um, Are you not swayed? I'm not sure. We'll have to, we can talk more. Let's get, let's, let's see where Michael is. No, okay. no, no, no. I don't think that. I think because you've taken a strong stand, I want, okay. I, I think you should reiterate. So what? Sure. I'll reiterate my, you reiterate your position and mm-hmm. I'm going to be using your two positions to judge my position Okay. because none of us have read at least the whole book. So I've read so, bits and pieces of it at times. I've heard a lot about it. I've, you know, heard it spoken of and 
and read bits of it, uh, but I've not read the whole book either. So all of us are judging it based off of just what we've heard from Joshua Harris and other experiences. So now I'm going to judge even you know, more secondary than that. And I'm going to judge based off of the two of you. Yeah, this is perfect. To sound nuance from a guy with a unicorn. Oh, I think that's where he's going to want to go. I think that's where he's going to want to go. Um, so let me reiterate my original position. Um, I will grant um, on this that, and maybe I didn't say it, obviously taking <laughs> relationship and marriage advice from an 18 year old is in general, um, I mean, it is my, it's just mind blowing. It is just hard to imagine that this book was written by an 18 year old it's just a, because it's, it's a, a bad call. Yeah. <laughs> that it's a book. Um, and so just imagine. Um, so just for everybody listening, imagine right now an 18 year old that you know, like an actual 18 year old, and think, okay, are you going to make some of the most uh, important decisions that will have effect yes. on the rest of your life based off of what they say? Just think about but, that for a moment. And so, so my yay is, and, and the two caveats, the two big caveats we gave in the episode is one, the no dating purity culture was tended towards fear mongering, which you kind of hear in this up in even that clip, which I think, again, I think he's presenting it potentially as positively as he can. But right when you're talking about AIDS and abortion, these kinds of things, right? There's fear mongering. Mm-hmm. Two, I said my big problem with purity culture, I don't think were its ideals, but were that it was a complete failure, right? The purity okay. scene is no more pure. Now, why did I yay it? Because the, the reaction against the general degradation of how men and women were relating the need to call to purity, the need to call uh, people to something else, the seriousness of sexual sin and its prevalence um, do justify a pretty radical response and even revision of how we understand how to go about these things, right? That's where my on a whole yay comes from. And if that sounds too close to nuance, no. That's sure, that, that, that no. sounds a oh, lot like no, nuance. No, no, no. You, right. you you might you might not be on the street of nuance, but you've called the Uber to get there. <laughs> I, and so I think um, so that was that is the the broad. And if again, if someone wants to hear me talk about that for that answer with someone let's, else let's for fifteen up. minutes, we well, can talk well, about it here because I'm talking about it with okay. you two. But if someone wants my original answer, go back, right. keep downloading that episode. Well, everyone already heard it. It's going to be one of our more popular ones. So. But I will say that you've 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 kind of shifted off of what the original topic was, because we were talking about Joshua Harris's stated yes. reason for writing the book, okay. rather than purity culture in and of itself, which is a much broader subject, sure. or even the whole book. Yeah. Um, but but I would go back with with the idea again. I would go back to um, that to to cancel. I mean, th- this is the same. Um, arguments that I've heard uh, growing up, the, the fundamentalism that I grew up in, um, that you, you shouldn't even go to the alcohol section of a grocery mm-hmm. store. You shouldn't go near it because somebody might see you go near it and they'll think that you're buying it. Or you shouldn't go into a movie theater because they might think that you're seeing a bad movie or something like that. So, this, so yeah. I, so I think the common ground we would have is right. So the person who's always in a bad relationship and you go, how are you always, how are you always in a bad relationship? And they're like, well, I keep going to the bars and I keep looking for people and every relationship I'm in isn't bad. Right. So, right. What we would agree on, because I agree with the point you're making on, um, on human nature and sin. And that's probably, honestly, this is one of the reasons I really want to do is because I think that's probably, and I didn't get there in the episode, but it was already long enough. And this is probably the point that uh, reform people actually probably need to hear. Um, even though I'm about, I, I will make other points is there are two things. One reformed people tend towards perfectionism or attempting perfectionism, right? So if we do the right homeschool, the right courtship, the right, whatever, the sin can't get in. That is the often temptation of 
and that's obviously the fundamentalist. That's any Christian, though. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's yeah. any Christian. Uh, the a faithful Christian, right? This is a temptation you have. Yeah. And what you're saying is, nope, sorry. <laughs> what a bummer. You're still a sinner and sin still gets into all these things. Totally true. Two, the other uh, issue is because God saves us from where we are and not where we should be and not where, not in the 1500s, not in the 1800s, not in an, from an ideal Christian family, painting like some kind of, you can never date to find a spouse is going to be fundamentally problematic. Cause let's see, let's even grant, and you don't have to Rob, you can tell me if you wouldn't grant this, let's grant some, some kind of courtship would be preferable. Not if you don't have godly parents, not if both, you know, like there's not if you are both adults, I'll, right? I'll grant These that. Kinds yeah, of, I'll grant that. And so, but if you don't have godly parents, if you are both adults, if you've been living on your own, as most people are just in the point of our culture, mm -hmm. then, then making a law is, is of course wrong, right? Making a law where there is no law in scripture is wrong. The question I have is, I would assume the target audience of this book were 18 year olds, right? They're I it, well, eight, 18 to 20, let's say 18 to 26. How's that? So co high school, Co college, college, a lot of college age. Yeah. Really high school stuff. to college. Yeah. The question I think is, was the, um, the scene of dating. And now I was too young when this book was written, but I'd say it's pretty close. Did any of those people need to be dating? Right. That's the kind of question we're at. Like, and I'm a, I'm pretty, I, this is why I'm still, this is why I, maybe, maybe I'm going to, man, if this thing ends with me in a nuance, won't that just be the great. You say know, maybe a lot for somebody that's taken a hard yay <laughs> or a hard day. But, 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 let's, let's, let, let's, let's let Michael weigh in. Yep. Great. We'll come, Michael, so you've heard my case. You've heard me potentially you. start folding like an uh, old <laughs> uh, lawn chair. But uh, why don't you why don't you uh, weigh in here? It's hard when when somebody from the Reform Forum comes on to our podcast, we feel that we have to acquiesce in some way. <laughs> we, we must not know. Uh, so, uh, man, I don't know. Um, can I just have reiterated at this point? What are we yay, nay, or nuancing? We're yay, nay, or nuancing because it it's uh, we, we seem to be making it a decision. We're, we're Rob is right. We are the stated purpose, even specifically the context we have in the clip, but is stated purpose or heart behind writing the book, right? As much Rob, that's what we're we're agreed there, mm -hmm. and I think yep. you are right. I started straying from that, but yes, that is what we are. That's our stated thing. His stated purpose behind writing the book. We can obviously, I think Rob and I would be in agreement that many applications of the book got out of control and, and probably some of the content inside of it. I mean, it was all written by an 18 year olds <laughs> and now it was written by an 18 year old who's walked away from the faith. So we have reason to be suspicious of some of some of the applic at least some of the applications. The question is, is the stated, yeah, the stated purpose behind the book, um, valid is it correct well, is is uh, his state of purpose is that he would say people shouldn't date because if you date you'll sin right yeah he so he does say in that clip dating leads to compromise mm. right just straight out like this is why he wrote it because dating leads to compromise and that phrase i have to go with the hard nay wow right that there you that, go. There you that, go. that is that is not the case um now I'll do what I always do and I'll, I'll make a position because Matt makes me and then I'll actually nuance it after the fact. <laughs> yep. So I know I just always cheat. Uh, but uh, there is, uh, you know, so like I see what you're saying, Matt, in that, you know, you're saying it from the, the side of uh, what an absolute mess, like the whole dating scene world was at the time and is now. Right. I mean, right. it's it, I mean, things have only gotten worse. Right. Like right. Things it's are, not better. Oh, it's it's an unbelievable mess. Right. It's uh, and I think, you know, uh, 
I mean, although it's true, right? Sin is in you, right? It's not in the thing. So we, we can't say, yeah, dating is sinful. Um, it might depend on what you mean by that, right? Because some people by dating, it means, okay, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to, you know, text my, uh, test my sexual compatibility with somebody. Okay, obviously, you know, you've stepped into sin. Um, so maybe it depends on, on what you mean. But generally speaking, and, you know, in the church, when we talk about dating, we're not talking about something that is sinful in and of itself. Um, and so it's, you don't want to say that, you know, that in itself is, is wrong in any way. Um, and at the same time, I do think that it's legitimate to be concerned about something like dating for, say, an 18 year old. And they're like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to start dating somebody and we're going to date for the next four or five years. We're going to become unbelievably emotionally close and we're going to spend tons of time alone together. All right. Uh, like you're you are setting yourself up for sin. Right. Like so you're walking into this is, um, you know, I think you could apply the wisdom of the father in Proverbs where he tells his son, hey, don't even walk down. The sinful woman's road, you know, like don't even don't even go down that road. And then he, you know, like he goes on to say, okay, and if you do go down a road, okay, just don't go in her door. And if you do go in her door and, you know, just know that her lips, they look sweet, but it's going to be bitter. And if you do end up tasting her lips, well, guess what? Here, you're wasting your youth. You're wasting your energy on something that will not benefit you in any way. And if all of that fails, you can repent and God will, uh, will uh, uh, bring you back. But you like, you need to run, you know? So, so there are all these like little nuances within that. Uh, that, you know, you can keep saying, but there is, I think there is a wisdom uh, for say an 18 year old many times to say, Hey, if this isn't, you know, if, if this is not serious and yet you're treating it in, this is, this is part of my problem with this whole thing is there is no um, culturally understood, recognized, like uh, we, we don't all recognize the same thing when we talk about dating, when we talk about courtship, when we talk about, you know, romantic relationships and how they should progress. There's just, there's no culturally consistent way that we all understand this. And uh, that creates a situation where it is, it is a mess, right? And that doesn't get fixed, by the way, when you say, well, we're just going to courtship instead, right? We've, I right. think we've all seen right. like some courtship models and like, you know, uh, closed family courtship models that are like, this is just weird, you know, like, yes. it's just, it's right. weird. It doesn't work. You don't have an entire community that's like, yeah, we all hold the same consistent standards when it comes to how we're going to act. Um, and there, you know, it, it's just, we just don't have that. Um, I was, we were just, uh, Earlier today, my family and I were watching, uh, started to watch again. It's a wonderful life. I know it's a Christmas movie. It's not no, it's Christmas, a great but movie. sorry, you're not the defender. Oh, it's a it's a great, it's a movie. great movie. And uh, but there's like there's so much like beautiful like uh, uh, the way that George and Mary interact, and it's playful. And there are you know kind of there's like a uh, you know there's a flirtation uh, in it, mm -hmm. uh, and yet there are clear boundaries that are just understood. And there are situations that they're in in the movie where at times today, like me now in this culture, I'm like, oh, man, this is bad. Like something bad's about to happen. But it doesn't because there's these culturally consistent values of like, this is how we do things. And I'm not saying things were perfect. And, you know, I in, thought it's because she uh, didn't the hate 40s. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even that's it. It's just, you know, it's it's maybe a little bit too far, but it's, you know, it's like playful, but it's not like, hey, I'm worried that this guy's going to really take advantage of this woman because there's this, you know, in the film, obviously, you know, in the real world, that might not have been the case, but in the film, you have a, a society where like, of course, you're not going to take advantage. So when you like, you know, make the joke that maybe you'll take advantage, it's, it's just obvious to everybody that this isn't going to happen. Now, again, I'm not holding that up as like, there's, there's our Christian values. You know, if we only, we could get back to the 1940s and Jimmy Stewart. And uh, what I'm saying is that we just don't have anything like that whether it be in courtship, whether it be in dating or, or any of these things. And so uh, it is, a, it is a, a mess that a lot of uh, people get into without any direction. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, does it make sense to me that somebody who is in the Christian culture and seeing the mess that was the dating scene and seeing a lot of sin that's involved in that scene, um, although we could you know, maybe say, well, maybe part of that was because you know, you in this extremely fundamentalist 
church, very clearly very legalistic church, one of the things that happens to people is they, yeah. you know, they react the other way. Um, so, you know, there's that, that reactionary uh, element is not necessarily obviously going to, going to fix it. Uh, what I'd say is it's understandable. I still have to take a hard A uh, for the actual statement of, you know, dating leads to compromise. But it does seem to me that it's, it's understandable where an 18 year old in that church, in this kind of system would want to write that kind of a thing. All right, Rob, before I fold like a lawn chair, do you want to, do you want to say anything else oh, before oh, I potentially yeah. fold like a lawn chair here <laughs> as a, with my last comments? Okay. Yeah, no, I may, may, let me solidify the, uh, the bending of the chair to make sure okay, get good, your, good. You get your fingers really caught in there um yeah it's i mean well, and, and look what we've done you know we've, we've which is fine we've, we've kind of um ventured into the idea of the whole dating culture and purity culture and that and um you know, it's it's a good to your children of of how how to handle being alone with the opposite sex with with the, the idea of dating with having a boyfriend with having a girlfriend these are uh there are biblical truths that need to be taught to our children so that they can know what is expected of them biblically by, by God. You, you know, though, that they're sinful. And so you try and help them understand they shouldn't be placed in situations where uh, they're, what they know to be right is going to be compromised. And these powerful urges are going to take over. And w- what we know to be right can often just slip away. And so the, absolutely children need to be taught these things. Um, and, and Michael's right that it wasn't, you know, Joshua didn't just come to these on his own in some vacuum. He was taught. He was taught, and this was him putting the theology that he'd been taught, which was a, a, a fundamentally bad understanding of sin, into a, a manual to try, with, with, with maybe some good intentions, well, what having sex before marriage is, is sinful. Therefore we will put roadblocks up and we will not do that. But as, as he's shown, as far as a Christian understanding of sin goes, you can be a pastor and you can deny Christ and walk away from the faith. So it, the, why? Because the sin is always within him. And uh, although I, I will say about the interview that I was, uh, I mean, he's, he seems to be a very nice guy. Right. Um, and and I actually, if I was going to make a prediction, I would say somewhere down the road I could see him end up back in Christianity, but in in kind of the liberal end of Christianity. Okay. So there you go. Now you can. Yeah. Uh, it's unfold a good, your it's a good prediction. We'll put we'll timestamp that one. Sure. I do hope it is at least a liberal tradition that liturgy doesn't begin with, as I recently learned a local liberal church's liturgy begins with the spirit of the trees greets you the spirit of the wind greets you oh that's not true is that that's local uh i'll i'll tell you about that was later <laughs> oh no uh, it wasn't you, your church right no it, it was not uh, but um anyways thanks for the uh, vote of confidence rap <laughs> i <laughs> i i listeners so so here is here is what I'm holding on to from my original take. I okay. think I think it is um I think it is entirely possible that certain methods of having a relationship are um at a foundational level compromised and need to be avoided by Christians. Right? Um and and now okay. um and so right my example you know, I used an obvious example of, right, the person who's like, why can't I meet a nice Christian guy? I am always at the bar, always talking to the men there. You know, I try so hard. Now, this sounds like a joke. This is a re- I know real people who have this problem, right? Um, now my wife just gave me a, a look like, hey. You why are you hanging out the single bars? Yeah. Uh, but, and so I do think that there is, there there is something there is something deeply sick um it's something you know but right what i think again and and right even me saying like this idea of want like right could i 
could I caveat, could I get myself to caveat it to you should kiss dating goodbye that is not for marriage? Like, could I get myself to there? The problem is once I've arrived there, I've pretty much arrived on Nuance Avenue and I'm going to be opening a store of let's talk through complicated relationship things. And, and then what I have to do is I have to reflect on. Uh, so, right. What I've gotten to is if, if on the merits, this, the system dating itself is a compromise. This is a compromised view, not a Christian view. Are of you human holding nature. that view that dating in and of itself? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying not. this is the problem. This is, this is the problem with holding my original view okay. that I would have to say dating itself is a compromise. Mm-hmm. I would have to, um, attempt to defend a view of human nature that I've already disagreed with. And two, then I would have, right. I've already said the fruits of purity culture in general weren't good. The fruits of this on Joshua Harris's, like the poster child of this and many others was obviously bad. And so here's, cause here's what I'm at. Right. So I dated to marry my wife. Guess what, everybody, you had to know this was coming, right? Everyone had to know I was going to say this. And of course, like many, almost every decision I've made in my life, as all of our listeners know, is basically every view and every perhaps virtuous thing I say on this podcast, I say, let me tell you the first story about where I did the exact opposite. <laughs> and, and, and that's certainly true with dating, right? I, I certainly was very ungodly in dating. Um, but what was the difference between dating my wife and dating before that? The difference was regeneration. The difference was the grace of God intervening in my life and changing, you know, how I operated in the world, not that I operated in the world and not that I even operated in a certain cultural form of the world. Now, of course, I do think there were certain cultural forms that I had to, at that point, fundamentally um, abandon because there was no, there was right. There was, this is, the, the need to leave Babylon at some point. Um, and I think that I do think there is a possibility of what a lot of what is called dating might fit into that. However, listeners, I'm here. I've arrived at nuance. <laughs> right. Nuance. I've arrived at nuance, I think, because I, I think come over to the right side of the street with, with my, I, I mean, I'm, I might be there, but, but I think that what I'm really? holding on to is, is yeah, I, I don't know. I think I'm at a nuance. We're, we're, we're at a table. We're having a, a glass of cognac and, and we are, and we're, we're at one with our correctness. <laughs> so. All right. Thanks for listening. Make sure you listen later this week when Rob is doing something other than correcting my podcasting. We'll talk about covenant theology and dispensationalism. Stay tuned.